Hello my crafty friends, it's Bevla here over at Crafting Chaos and I'm here with another how-to video. Um, so on my recent YouTube channel you saw a file where I actually showed you how to assemble the Magic Eye Shutter card and it featured this daisy flower here. <coughs> now, what I'm going to do is show you how to reproduce the daisy file. Okay, so I've already brought on I'll show you which one it is. It's the teardrop shape and you'll find it down in the purple shapes, the others, and it's this one here. So I've brought it on and so all I did is brought it on. It brings it on quite large and you need to resize it by to about one inch by two and a half inches. So thereabouts. So one by two and a half and we'll make it exactly just so that for argument's sake. So this is going to be resized to one by 2.5, like so. So that's the same size. Now, so I'm just going to leave the daisy flower here for reference so that we've got it to refer to, but now I'm going to work with the petals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that one in fact what we'll do is we'll get rid of that one and we're going to start with this one and we're going to create an offset line inwards by about 0 0.6 and we'll look at what sort of a bounding box that gives us so that's roughly the same as what we've got here so we'll call that good select both but first of all we need to make sure what's on top we want the smaller of the two shapes on top and currently it isn't so we just need to move it so that it is. So now that smaller shape is now on top. So we're going to select both, then go on to the second icon here, which is edit and select, process the overlap and subtract. So that's effectively punched out that shape, which will allow us to weld it as a shape like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit duplicate which is command and d for me because i made that a shortcut alternatively you can right click and duplicate or you can layer and duplicate there's always more than one way so we want the actual pointed side of the shape facing towards the center so all i'm going to do whilst that is selected i'm going to click onto the second icon which is edit and do flip on the vertical axis which will flip it so that we've now got effectively the mirror image. So we're going to set them a little bit apart from each other, like so. I'm going to select both and we're going to line them up vertically and then we're going to layer and group them. Okay, so once we've got them grouped we know to make some duplicates. So you can right click and duplicate, you can layer and duplicate or I've made a shortcut which is control and duplicate. So now I've got four of the same stacks. What we're going to do is lay them all up on top of one another. So we're going to centralise them vertically and to the middle. Then we need to click off anywhere on the page and select the first layer. So when we just click off and click on, we're now effectively just selecting that top layer, which we're going to rotate using the angle rotation by 45 degrees. Then we're going to click off click on the stack again and we're going to rotate 90 degrees and finally we're going to click on the center one again and rotate it by 135 degrees which positions them equally. What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to select them, layer and group them so now I can move those around without disturbing the flower. I'm then going to bring on a circle so we just want the basic shapes again, bring on a circle and we're going to shrink it down and we're going to shrink it down so that it will fit in the middle of our shape that we've created. So I'm just going to move it in to see how we're looking. Um, I think I'll just give it a bit of colour and then we can see what we're doing. So I think maybe we could stand to be a little bit bigger but not much more than that. Now what I'm going to do whilst it's selected, the circle, I'm going to go on edit and I'm going to create an offset but I want to go inward this time 
by the same amount and I'm going to say OK. Then I'm going to remove that small one just for now. Then I'm going to select the larger circle and the flower head, line it up central and middle and then hit weld. Now that's welded that shape together. So what we're going to do now, we're going to bring this other one back into play, but we need to arrange and bring it to the front. So we're going to select both shapes, line up with the centre and the middle. Then whilst they're both selected, you can see the bounding box around both shapes, we're going to hit subtract. And that's effectively punched that hole out now. Now, this stem that we've got here started off from this um, palm tree from the Free Stencil Gallery. And all I did was right clicked and saved the image, then went into my canvas software, went onto this icon, trace, select the image, select the palm tree, select open. We don't want the, to paste the image and say OK. OK. Now, I'm just going to move our flower head out of the way for a minute whilst we look at the palm tree. What we need to do is we're going to elongate it a little, or rather a lot, so that we're getting a nice bit of um, stem area that we can work with. So what we need to do now is we're going to select a square and then we're going to duplicate that and we're going to bring this to the bottom and drag it across and we're going to move it so that it's just cutting off that area at the bottom. Select the palm tree and subtract. So that's removed the bottom part there. Next, we're going to remove quite a chunk of this palm tree at the top. So we're going to make our square whoops, bigger, so it needs to be wider and taller. So I'm just dragging it out. Now I'm not going to take it all the way to the bottom because we'd end up with a really short stem. So what I'm going to do is just drag this up now and just checking that we've got our square on the top. Then we can select both and hit subtract. And if that happens, it just means that it's misled me and let me believe that that one is at the back and it isn't. So I'm going to send it to the back. Then we'll do that operation again and subtract. So now we're left with this part. So again, we're just going to use our square and we're just going to use the square to trim down this tree, if you will. So I'm just going to rotate it slightly so that we can get most of it and then select the rest of the tree and subtract. And then finally, one last time with the square and I found this was the easiest way to do it rather than try to do it freehand, unless you're really good with the node editing, which often people find a little bit um, frustrating. It can be quite difficult, so it's much easier to do this subtract method. And if you get left with a bit like that, just bring on another square. Sorry, bring on another square when it comes on and just use it to delete I'm going to make a duplicate of that so I can get this bit straight as well. We need to move that out of the way. Select those two. And subtract. And then I'm just going to use this square. Just shrink it down. Make sure it's at the top. So arrange and bring to the front. And then I'm just going to get rid of this little nubbin here, if you will. So I'm just going to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. Select it, just rotate it a little bit if you need to, to get right in. When you're happy, select it again and hit subtract. Now when we zoom out, fit to mat, we can see that it's all but gone. And if it bothers you, just double click to expose the nodes and delete a couple of those nodes and then it'll get rid of it completely. Now we've got the basics of our stem. All I did then was make it longer. 
and a little bit thinner, like so. Okay, so once you've got your stem and you're happy with it, you can bring on your flower. Now, I don't want to attach my stem right through that. I want to go in between the petals. So all I'm going to do is using this circle at the top here, I'm going to free rotate until the stem is kind of going in between the two petals, as you see. Now I'm just going to make it slightly thinner still for now. And I'm just going to position it so that what well, I don't want it to be overhanging there. So I'm just going to move it down. And if it bothers you and you can't do it with the mouse, just use your arrow keys until you're happy with the position. So I think if we give it a little bit of colour, that might help what we're doing. So you can see where we're at now. So we're just going to shunt it across till it's in between the petals, but not going over that circle because we don't want that to stay a perfect circle. And if you're struggling to make, see if it's like that, just zoom in and then you can see that it's actually not touching. I'm just going to delete that other stem. So now we're going to select the stem and the flower head and go on weld. So that's now welded the stem to the flower, display, zoom, fit to mat, and that's where we're up to. So the last thing we need to do now is make our leaves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going on basic shapes again and this time we're looking for that sort of leaf shape, this one. So we're going to drag it on, get rid of the shape gallery and we're going to resize it to make it a little bit thinner and also a little bit less tall, Let's reduce the height like so and then I'm going to create an offset and I want it inward and say okay like so and then we've got that one at the top so we select both and subtract so this is the start of our leaf and we need two so I'll duplicate and then I'm going to move them into position and you can position them anywhere you wish on your stem so I'm going to position one towards the bottom so it needs to be overlapping with the stem but not coming out through the other side then I'm just going to rotate this one Again, we're going to move it up to the stem and you can always adjust your angle just by using that little circle, which is your free rotation. Line it up, then select the flower and both leaves and hit weld. Now you've created that flower embellishment like you saw me use on my card. Now, remember, you can make it smaller so I did mine about 5.75 inches when I did mine. And edit undo because I had it on maintain aspect ratio and when I did it I've just realised it wasn't checked. So 5.75 and that would give you the same size as the embellishment that what I had. Okay. So that's how I created the knockout flower, if you will. And what I did then is I actually cut it out of black twice so I could double layer it. And then I cut it out of a piece of um, green, a piece of orange and a piece of yellow so that I could paper piece the leaves back in and also the petals so that they were alternate orange, yellow, orange, yellow and so on and then I just put um, whichever colour I thought was best for the circle. Now, what I did on my card, which you might have seen if you'd seen them on the um, Facebook webpage for Scan and Cut users, is that I actually used my Distress Inks to make a background and that determined, helped me to determine where I was going to place it. So that's how I created it. So I had quite a bit of interest of people saying that they would like to see how the, the card was made. 
Now, just as a sneaky peek, if you will, I'm just going to open it to show you. I'm not going to do this right now. But I've also got what I'd call a stylized flower, if you will. So if I just open that, you'll see what I mean. And if I just move the ones that we've just created. So there you've got a matting layer. For our stylized flower. Okay, so it's a little bit more contemporary even than the one that we've just made, the daisy flower, but that's more of a kind of perfect flower, symmetrical, the flowers and petals. This one's a little bit more crazy daisy kind of thing, so a bit more loopy and definitely a little bit more. So just let me delete some of these things off and then not the one we've just made because that's the one I'll be putting into my file. So I'm just going to move these out of the way, delete them, and I can give you a real preview then of what it's looking like. So that's the one we've made today. And you, again, it is quite contemporary, but this one obviously is more so. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do next, if you will. All right, so that's our card for today or rather our embellishment for a card for today i hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please like share and subscribe and remember to check out my youtube channel and also my other videos on my youtube channel and also my blog beverly10.blogspot where my files are available for free download okay that's all for now so we'll see you next time thanks and bye